Hey, what's happening, you guys? This is your boy, Creative D. Well, your everyday creative dad. Welcome to the channel, and thank you all for tuning in. Man, I got a super quick video for you guys. My homeboy, one of my subscribers to the channel, Jupiter181, hit me up, and he was just like, yo, how do I save CPU inside of the machine? Because I'm trying to load a whole bunch of Universal Audio plugins, and if you know anything about Universal Audio plugins, you got a certain amount of DSP power. So, uh, we talked about it, walked it through it, and I would, thought it would be a good, good video to shoot for you guys to show y'all how to actually do that so that's what we're gonna be diving in how you save cpu inside a machine you guys already know what time it is let's dive in and let's get creative All right, you guys, so welcome back. As y'all can see, I got an instance of machine put up on the screen, and there are two ways that I know of of how to save CPU uses inside a machine. If there's another way you guys know about it, then please leave a comment in the comment section. Let me know because we're trying to learn from each other. But um, anyway, so the first way is very simple. It's pretty much printing whatever effects that you got added on your um, plugin chain to that sound and then rendering out right back inside a machine. It's super easy to do. All you have to do is press this little squiggly button right here. Once you have something uh, down inside of your project area right here, then you press this little squiggly wave button and then export back in. Um, just a little caveat, if I have plugins loaded, matter of fact, let's load up. Uh, matter of fact, we'll go over here and let's place lay something down. Then you guys can see the difference of what it's actually doing. So I'm gonna go over here and play this really quick. So that is a quick little loop sample, whatever from um, uh, Arcade that I got loaded up here. Yo, if y'all don't have Arcade, I highly recommend y'all go check this out. This thing is super duper dope and it does some awesome stuff. It has a whole bunch of loops and everything loaded up. I'm gonna leave a link in the description so you guys can check this plugin out. I love Arcade. But anyway, so now that I got this loaded up here, now if I wanted to, I can come over here and add different plugins to this. Let's add a flanger and a chorus effect. Let's add both of those. So, boop, 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 boop. Oh, so now I got a flanger and a chorus effect added and I want to print those to this sound. And another thing about uh, Arcade is that whenever I utilize Arcade, it's a little bit CPU intensive. So I don't want to load up another instance of Arcade when I go back to add something else. So I'll print this to it and then I'll go back and I'll delete it and then I will um, then I will utilize Arcade again. So I don't have to add another instance of Arcade. Let me show you guys what I'm talking about here. So now that I got this uh, these plugins loaded, let's play it back really quick. Something simple. Now let's go over here and press that little squiggly button. You gotta long press it. Boop. And you just drag and drop it right back inside of here. Let's go back over here and delete that. Now keep in mind that machine only exports at the group level. So if I hold this down, if I got a whole bunch of drums right here, for example, and I just come over here and hold this down, it's gonna export all of these into one WAV file. So I typically do this when I have an instrument loaded up like Arcade, where I don't wanna load up different instruments, but I wanna utilize that same instrument to add uh, add more sounds from that instrument. I will export them back inside, delete this uh, MIDI file that I had right here, MIDI note that I had up here. Um, and then now I can utilize Arcade, the plugin is still there and I can get rid of these if I want to. And all the effects and everything is printed directly to this uh to this instrument so let's play it back and this is what it sounds like now i can still go back in here and i am on arcade and i can add some more instances of arcade so let's add another instance So I, if I like that, I can say, okay, you know what? I want to make some changes to RK really quick. Boop. And let's go and just add dual delay modifier. Oh, my computer freezing up. Okay, there we go. There we go. So boom, add some of that. Bow, now play it back. 
And I can do the exact same thing that I did over here and export. You know what? Let me cancel that. Cancel that. I have to mute this because I don't want that to export with it. Boom. Doop. Drag and drop that. And I can come back over here to arcade and clear that out. No, it's a little bit harder to do inside a machine, but it's, it's a way that we can, I mean, we have a way to do it, so. So you notice I had to mute those sounds because if I didn't, it would have exported those sounds with it. All right, so the next way that you can save CPU uses inside a machine is super simple. It is kind of like how you send effects or bus effects. If you got uh, like a reverb that you want to send to multiple tracks, you can do it inside a machine. It's called aux sends. Uh, but all you have to do is come over here to a separate group. I typically utilize a group and I'll name that group my EFX a group, my effects a group. And then I'll go in here and I will add any of effect that I want onto uh, a single pattern, I mean a single pad. So let's go back over here to Native Instruments and my favorite reverb, which is Ryam, Ryam, Ram. I don't know how, I don't know how you pronounce it, but this is my favorite reverb. So I'll add that and then I'll come over here to another sound and I'll add another, um, let's add a beat delay. Boom. Now that I got both of those added to um, its own separate sound, now I can come back over here to arcade and whichever um, sound that I'm clicked on, say, say, say for example, I want to add it to this right here, to this sound right here. I can press this button right here. This is my channel button, my routing button, or I can do it on the actual hardware. All you gotta do is press this button right here and it gets you to the channel button. So once I'm in here, I have to come over here to my auxiliary tab Hope you guys are following me. Come over here to my auxiliary tab, and then I can just say, hey, the destination that I want this to send to is this uh, this this reverb right here and this beat delay. Now, this determines how much of that I'm sending, and this is our post and pre-fader, just meaning that uh, if the post fader, I forget which one it is, I think post or pre, anyway, it, one of them determines if I slide the fader down or slide this fader up or down, it'll affect the signal before or after pre i think is before and then uh post is after obviously so all right so now that i got that loaded up now i can just come over here and dial in the amount, amount of reverb that i want and you can hear that it added that reverb and that delay to that sound and now i don't have to add these effects anymore. I can send this to any sound. I can come over here and say, hey, I wanna add it to my uh, my snare here, or my not my snare, my hi-hat here. And I'll come over here and add Ray, Rayum, Rom, however you pronounce it. Somebody in the comment section, tell me how do you pronounce this plugin? Is it Rom or Rayum? I don't know. I just call it Rom, Rom. We're gonna stick with Rom for now. So, all right, so now I got that. Let's go ahead and play that and I know that's a little bit extreme, but you get the gif. This is how you save CPU inside a machine. It's super simple, super easy. And I hope this video helped out somebody. If it did, then you guys please leave a thumbs up, comment in the comment section, and then subscribe to this channel so you guys won't miss any of my future videos. I hope you guys like this video. Until next time, you guys be awesome, be creative, and don't let nobody stop you from doing what it is you wanna do in life. Deuces.